So we're going to start the chapter one notes. Uh, you can find this on Schoology. I'll post this on Schoology as well as it's on the class website. Okay, so this is chapter one. You hopefully have read parts of chapter one already. If not, please still um, get the textbook or find it online until you get the textbook. Textbook is called General Chemistry, The Central Concepts by Raymond Chang, and the cover looks something like this if you look at the little dot where my face was. Okay, anyway, so um, this class is Chemistry, The Study of Change, uh, chapter one. This here says Hua Xie, which means change study. That's what this class is, the study of chemistry. If this is math class in Chinese, it would be called number study. Uh, the study of life in Chinese would be biology. The study of words would be literature, or you'd probably call it English. But this class is change study, how things change. Uh, that's chemistry, chapter one. Okay, so... Um, there are many different branches of chemistry, and what are different branches of chemistry? Um, or, sorry, or we'll get to the branches of chemistry, but where is chemistry used in? Uh, it's used in health and medicine, like sanitation, surgery with anesthesia, vaccines, antibiotics. It's used in energy and the environment, fossil fuels, solar energy, nuclear energy. Um, it's also used for materials and technology. How, what makes up um, this pen that I just happened to be holding? The uh, there are crystals in this metal, although you can't see it. But if you looked in metals under a reflecting microscope, you probably would see crystals in it. Um, so what makes up a material? Materials and technology: polymer, ceramics, liquid crystals, room temperature semi superconductors. It's also used in food and agriculture, in genetically modified crops, natural pesticides, and specialized fertilizers. Okay, so this is the chemistry class. It's a science class. We use the scientific method. I'm not gonna go through all the details because you've probably seen this a thousand times in middle school, but it's a cycle. We see something, maybe we come up with ideas to uh, representation. We um, do an experiment and we uh, test it out and we interpret that data to um, and maybe make new observations. So it's something that's constantly occurring. Uh, hypothesis is a tentative explanation for a set of ob observations. Uh, you probably know it as um, well, an educated guess as well. Um, same thing, but something like your, based on what you've seen, your idea about it. Of course, it can be tested, and a hypothesis should be able to be tested and modified depending on the results of your test. Um, Eventually, oh, my face is in the way, but um, eventually we get to what's called a law, and I can't move my face, or at least I don't know how right now. A law is a concise statement of a relationship between, ooh, uh, between uh, phenomena that's always the same under the same conditions. Okay, now I moved it way too high. I don't want to move it back. Okay, so uh, a law, example, a law would be, say, the law of gravity. Um, it always... Um, it, when you drop something, it always falls and is always the same under the same conditions. If you're changing some condition about it, then it's not the same situation. But law is something that always happens. There's no exceptions to that. Going on. Okay, so this class is again chemistry, the study of matter and the changes they undergo. So what makes up something, a material, and how does it change? Uh, what is matter? Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So space meaning volume. If it takes up some amount of volume. An atom is matter. It doesn't take up much volume, but it has a volume. Um, and mass would be, is not technically weight, but um, I'm sure you might know the difference between weight and mass. Uh, mass does not need gravity. Weight does. Mass doesn't change whether you're on Earth or in space or on the moon, um, but technically weight does. So that's why we, we officially use mass, but on Earth, weight and mass are kind of interchangeable. Um, but that's more of a physics thing for right now. 
um, for in terms of chemistry, weight, mass, you can kind of say they're the same at least on Earth. Uh, so sometimes we'll say the weight, sometimes we'll say the mass in chemistry. Technically, we probably should say mass. But anything that has mass or weight uh, and takes up volume, some sort of space. Uh, atom is matter because although it doesn't weigh much, it does have some sort of weight or mass and it does have some sort of volume. Okay, substance is a form of matter that has definite composition and distinct properties. Substance could be something like water, H2O, oh, you probably know what water is, but um, it has a set composition, well, H2O, distinct properties. It freezes at zero degrees Celsius, at least pure water, on, um, at regular pressure on Earth, um, and it boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So um, if you're talking about another substance, say alcohol, alcohol, let's just use isopropyl, like rubbing alcohol, it doesn't boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know the boiling temperature rubbing alcohol, but I know it's less than 100 degrees Celsius. So that one has its unique or distinct properties. But substance, form matter that has definite composition and distinct properties. Oh, well, here are some examples. Water, ammonia, sucrose, or sugar. Gold is a substance. Um, part of its distinct properties, it conducts electricity. It's shiny. Oxygen is a gas at room temperature. Um, it is not shiny. It was a gas. So um, something that has distinct, distinct properties and its definite composition. Okay, a mixture is a combination of two or more substances that retain their distinct identities. There are two types of mixtures that we're going to be talking about here. And, you know, my face is over the picture. Oh, well. Um, and one is a homogeneous mixture versus a heterogeneous mixture. Uh, the prefix homo in homogeneous means the same. Uh, the composition of this thing is the same throughout. Example would be uh, milk or a soft drink. Um, if you don't know what solder is, don't worry about it. But milk and a soft and soft drinks are homogeneous mixture. Um, if someone poured you a some soda from a two liter bottle, you don't say, "Hey, give me the last cup in that two liter bottle because it's sweeter or is less sweet." It's homogeneous. It's the same. And if you look under a, a with magnifying glass, it looks the same. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. That's it's homogeneous. It's the same throughout. Heterogeneous mixture is not the same throughout. Cement, iron filings, and sand, that's what that picture is supposed to be. At least you can see the edge of it. Um, that's, a, that's a heterogeneous mixture. It's a mixture. It's not the same. Uh, another good example would be like a salad. A salad is a mixture. Maybe uh, there's lettuce, there's tomatoes, there's croutons, there's whatever is in that salad. Maybe there's cheese. Obviously, you can see the different parts in it. You can pick out tomatoes if you don't like the tomatoes. You can, uh, if you don't want croutons, you can literally take them out. Um, it is not the same throughout, but obviously it's a mixture. Uh, so a salad is mixed up with all these different things. It's a heterogeneous mixture. It's not the same throughout. So even though you can't really see, you can see the edge of the picture, cement, iron filings, and sand, it is a mixture. One thing about mixtures, they can be separated uh, into, um, by physical means. Physical means can be used to separate a mixture of its pure components. So if you had that iron filings and sand, you can remove the iron using, say, a magnet. Distillation, you might not know the process, uh, but can be used to separate out, say, two liquids mixed together. If you mix alcohol in water, um, it's not so easy. You probably think, how would you separate it out? You can't take a filter, like filter paper, like a coffee filter, paper to remove the alcohol. Um, but a process called distillation. Um, if you, if, okay, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. If I told you that alcohol boils at 80 degrees Celsius, if you had a, a mixture of alcohol and water and you heated up that mixture of alcohol and water to say 90 degrees Celsius, what will happen is the alcohol in it, which boils at around 80 degrees Celsius, would actually boil away, leaving the alcohol. Um, that process separating um, or turning a liquid into a gas 
and then you could turn it back into liquid. That process is called distillation. So you can separate a mixture by uh, heating up an alcohol and water mixture at different temperatures. One of the liquids will boil off first, and you can capture that um, and turn that back into liquid separately. And you can separate those two parts. Okay, elements. Uh, there are, uh, element is something that cannot be separated into a simpler substance by chemical means. Um, oh, I think I figured out how to move that little dot on the other side. Okay, uh, and there are 118 different elements that have been identified um, as of, that I know of, as at least of 2020, if the new one's been discovered, I don't know, I, I don't think so, but there's 118 elements that have been identified. Uh, 82 of them are naturally occurring, like gold, aluminum, lead, oxygen, carbon. The rest of them, meaning 36, 36 elements were created by uh, scientists like americium or seaborgium. Uh, these are man-made elements. You cannot find them in nature. Um, elements, again, cannot be separated into simpler substances by chemical means. Okay, and here's a list of some uh, common elements. Uh, you probably, well, actually, you should know all these elements at this point because you should have already taken the quiz and have memorized, like, bismuth is BI, calcium is CA, uh, cobalt is CO, copper is CU. One, oh, if there are two, sim, two letters in the symbol, the first letter is always capitalized. That's actually for all of them, if, even if it's just one letter. First letter is always capitalized, and if there's a second letter, the second letter is always lowercase. Capital C, lowercase r for chromium. Capital C, lowercase o for cobalt. Capital C, lowercase u for copper. So if there are two letters, and there's not going to be more than two letters, if there are two letters in the element, the second element is going to be a lowercase. If you put capital C, capital O, that's not cobalt anymore. That is carbon with oxygen. Capital O is oxygen. So just make sure whenever you have a two-letter element, the second element, or second letter, sorry, is uh, lowercase. Okay, so compounds. Compound substance composed of atoms of two or more different elements chemically united in fixed proportion. Compounds can only be separated into their pure components or elements by chemical means. Water, H2O, glucose, C6H12O6, that's simple sugar, uh, ammonia, NH3. Uh, water is made up of two hydrants and oxygen, uh, and they are always in this proportion. If you said H2O2, it's no longer water. That's water, uh, hydrogen peroxide. So there's two hydrants for every oxygen. And compounds are made up of your different elements in some combination or another. Just kind of like how words are made up of combinations of different letters. So um, that's how what compounds are. Compounds are combinations, and they are fixed proportion. You can't just, if you change the numbers or the proportions around, it's no longer the same compound. It's something else. Just, so if you, just like if you change the letters in a word, it now is a completely different word. Okay, so what do we have so far? So matter. Matter is made up of mixtures or pure substances. However, you can separate mixtures into pure substances by some sort of physical mean. Mixtures are either homogeneous, meaning it's the same throughout, or heterogeneous, meaning uh, there, are, there are different parts to it. Pure substance can be either classified into compounds or elements. A compound is made up of two or more elements, though compounds can be separated by chemical means into the elements. So these are uh, how we can classify matter. Oh, all these diagrams are also found in the textbook. I should have mentioned that before. All these diagrams are also found in the textbook um, in, uh, in chapter one. Okay, we have three states of matter on here. There's actually five, but there's three main states of matter. Uh, you probably already know this, solids, liquids, gases, solids. Uh, the particles are very close together, though they are technically moving, but they're moving in place. Liquids, these molecules are sliding past each other, but they are still held together. Um, gases, these molecules are far apart from each other, and uh, they bounce off of each other. Um, 
you probably know two other well you probably know one other say matter you don't might not know the uh, fifth one so much uh one you probably know is that's right plasma uh plasma is another state of matter and um think of like fire um as plasma um and or the sun the sun is not a solid liquid nor gas it's a plasma um the fifth state of matter that is not so common mainly because it was only discovered about 20 years ago is something called a bose einstein condensate uh let's not get into that right now that's only been discovered 20 years ago and this is just only high school chemistry okay so physical or chemical a physical change does not alter the composition of a substance uh ice melting sugar dissolving in water is a physical change if I ripped up a piece of paper, that is a physical change. It's still paper, okay? Yes, if I had a piece of paper and ripped it in half, each of those two pieces of paper is still paper. It's a physical change. I didn't change what it is. Some of these things like ice melting, sugar dissolving water, those are a little tricky because technically changes in states of matter is not a chemical change. It's a physical change. When you melt ice, ice, chemical formula ice, it's H2O in a solid form. Water is H2O in a liquid form. The substance is still H2O, which is why melting, freezing, boiling, or dissolving, they are considered physical changes. I can uh, boil away the water. If I dissolve sugar in water, I can boil away the water, and I will have the sugar still. So physical change is not changing the composition of substance or identity of substance that also includes uh, changes in states of matter, solid liquid gases. A chemical change though alters the composition or identity of the substance involved. A uh, burning something, that's a classic example, burning something, or milk turning sour. It's no longer milk, okay? Burning any substance, if I burned a piece of paper, if I ripped it in half, it's a physical change because it's still paper. If I burn paper now and it's now ashes, that's not paper anymore. You can't use it to write with. It's something totally different. So chemical change alters the composition or identity of substance, substance or substances involved. Okay, bunch of other terms. I know there's a lot of terms right now, and that's because this is chapter one. And chapter one, it's just mostly definitions. What is chemistry? Those kind of things for now. Um, but obviously we'll get into more stuff, but this is just kind of day one. Okay, other terms, extensive property versus intensive property. Extensive property of a material depends upon how much matter is being considered. Mass, length, volume. So if it, uh, if you have more of it, of course the mass change. If you have more of it, the length and volume will change. That's an extensive property. If a property that of a material that does not, notice in red there, does not depend on how much matter is being considered, is an intensive property. Density, temperature, and color are intensive property. Uh, if I had a cup of water or a gallon of water, um, it's temperature, I'm assuming it's just the same water in the room. It's temperature shouldn't sh change, but the mass obviously would change and its volume would be different because mass and volume are extensive properties. And, or another thing would be if you had a big piece of paper, the same paper that you rip in half, now a smaller piece of paper, the smaller piece of paper, the color shouldn't change just because the smaller, the color wouldn't change nor would its temperature nor density because those properties are intensive. Does not matter how much you have. Obviously, rip up a piece of paper, its mass, its volume, its length would change. Those are extensive properties. Okay, so matter. Anything that occupies space and has mass. Mass is the measure of a quantity of matter. Um, so how much matter there is is measured in mass again i kind of said before on earth weight and mass uh, how much gravity exerts on a substance uh weight and mass on earth are about the same the reason why weight in physics weight equals c 
gravitational force times the mass. And on Earth, C equals 1. So on Earth, weight equals mass. That's what I meant on Earth. Yeah, if you set the weight, the mass. And this is chemistry class, not physics. It does make a difference in physics for sure. But um, it doesn't matter. Um, we will use them interchangeably. But technically, we should be using the term mass. It's more accurate. Um, since moon's gravitational force is about a tenth that on Earth, not exactly, but about a tenth that on Earth, um, a one kilogram uh, bar would weigh one kilogram on Earth, and only about a tenth that on a moon. Which is why you could probably, if you're on a moon, you could lift what would be considered more massive things because its weight is uh, significantly less. Gravity pulling down on it is significantly less. Okay, going on. Okay, uh, so mass, let me go back. So mass is one of our, what's called SI units. Ooh, I should mention the term SI. SI is called the System International. Is International System of Units. Probably also, you probably know it as the metric system. But officially, it is called the SI units. Okay, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different SI units on this table, table two in the textbook. Length, how we measure length internationally, or the metric system, technically called the SI units, or the international system. It's based in France, that's why System International. Um, length is measured in meters. The symbol of meters is the lowercase m. Uh, yes, the United States will use feet, okay, but internationally it's meters. Mass, again, it's technically mass, but if you said weight, whatever. Uh, the unit is kilogram, symbol kg. Um, in the United States, we use pounds. Internationally, it is in kilograms. Time, thank goodness, it's the same everywhere. We measure th things all around the world in seconds, uh, is the base unit. Electric current, you don't have to worry about that because uh, that's more of a physics thing for now, but it's measured in amperes. Temperature, the SI unit is a Kelvin. It is related to Celsius. And um, actually, in today's notes, it will be conversion between Celsius and Kelvins. Uh, but officially, it's the Kelvin. Uh, United States, we use Fahrenheit. Amount of substance, we'll be using this a lot in chemistry. You'll see this term moles uh, in chapter three, I believe. You'll be using moles a lot. How much, how many moles of copper atoms, okay? Uh, luminous intensity, or how bright something is, is measured in candela. Uh, we won't be using that in this class, but these are just some other SI base units. Okay, one good thing about SI units, I'm trying to move my face on the other side, uh, is we can use prefixes. Okay, that didn't help. Uh, we can use prefixes. And so the prefixes on here, this is table three in a textbook. In If we met in person, you would probably be having to memorize these. Uh, so you probably should know these, and half of them you probably already heard of. Like you've heard of kilo, a kilogram, a kilometer. Kilo just means a thousand. If you have a kilogram, that's a thousand grams. Kilometer, kilometer, that's a thousand meters. Okay? But it could also be kiloliters. Lowercase k, capital L, kiloliters. That'd be a thousand liters. Um, it could be kilokelvins. Kelvins is a unit of temperature. Uh, lowercase k, capital K would be a thousand kelvins. Um, you've probably also heard centi. Centi is a hundredth. A centimeter is a hundredth of a meter. A millimeter, milli is lowercase m, is a millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. A millisecond is a thousandth of a second. A centis, centis, centisecond uh, is a hundredth of a second. A kilosecond is a thousand seconds. That's a good thing about SI units. You can use all these prefixes. I want to go through all the prefixes. You've heard a kilo. You've probably heard a deci, which is a tenth. You've heard a centi. You've heard a milli. But what about these other ones? Mega, giga, tera. Most commonly, you probably heard them about in computers. A megabyte, a gigabyte, a terabyte. 
What do these prefixes, capital M, capital G, capital T, uh, stand for? Mega means a million. Giga means a billion, or 10 to the ninth. Terra means that number is a trillion, or 10 to the 12th. Million, billion, trillion. Mega, giga, terra. So if you had a mega byte, you have a million bytes. Kind of. Uh, giga is a million. Sorry, that's a billion. Sorry, billion. Ten to the ninth is a billion. And terra is a trillion. So if you had a uh, terra kelvin, that would be a trillion kelvins. Okay, yeah, that's a crazy temperature, but that's what it would mean. Um, a gigameter, gigameters would be, again, that's a billion. A billion meters, gigameter. Megameter would be a million meters. Um, where would we use these kind of things? Probably in, obviously, something far away, astronomy. Uh, small things, a tenth, deci, centi, milli, millimeter, a thousandth of a meter. We get smaller than that. A micrometer is a millionth of a meter. This weird looking, looks like a U. It's actually a Greek letter mu. Um, uh, well, it looks like that. Okay. Uh, that symbol there is a Greek letter. Why, why not just use M? Because we already use M in milli and capital M in mega. So we ran out of M, so we use the Greek M. That's kind of how it, how we chose that. Uh, mu, the Greek letter mu, is a million, a million. So micrometer, this mu with an M after that, would be a millionth of a meter. In fact, that's used a lot in biology. So how big are how big is this part of the cell? How big is the cell wall in the plant cell? It would probably be measured in micrometers. Um, smaller than micrometers would be nanometers. Okay, that's a millionth of a meter. Lowercase n, lowercase m, m for meters would be nanometers. Where would you use nanometers? In chapter, I believe it's seven, we'll be using things in nanometers and we're talking about how big is the light? How big is the distance between the light waves? They will be measured in nanometers. The wavelength of light will be measured in nanometers. Uh, picometers, so that's na micro is a millionth, nano is a billionth, pico is a trillionth. A trillionth of a meter, or 10 to the minus 10, is a picometers. Lowercase p, lowercase m, for would be picometers. When the world is a picometer, what is that tiny? The size of atoms. The size of the radius of an atom is measured in picometers. In fact, an atom is around, typical atom, eh, it depends on which atom. Of course, there's bigger ones, there's smaller ones. You're talking about around 100 picometers. Okay, so an atom is around, again, there's bigger atoms, so this is kind of uh, hard to say, but on that scale of around 100 picometers is the size of an atom. So, um, or the radius of an atom. Okay, so these are the prefixes that we use with our SI units, and they can be used with any of our SI units. You cannot use them with our old English system of pounds. You can't say a kilopound or a megapound, or a gigapound, that doesn't, well, I've never heard of that, and we don't do that. But we can do that with our SI units, like you can say kilometer, decimeter, centimeter, millimeter, micrometer, nanometer, picometer. Just use the symbol, and then use M for meters. If it's liters, it's L for liters. But these are the prefixes that normally you would know, have to know in this chemistry class. Okay. So, there are also some derived units. Volume is a derived unit. It's not its own unit. A uh, cube that is one meter by one meter by one meter. This is a picture of one meter by, well, it's not exactly one meter by, but if you had a cube that's one meter by one meter by one meter, that would be a cubic meter, meter cubed. It's made up of a different unit of meter. It's just cubed. So, it's considered what's called a derived unit. And... Uh, I'm not going to go through all this, but one thing you probably should know is this part here in this box. That is, one milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter. And it's derived here, but I don't want to get into that right now. It's just right now. The main thing is, one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. So, if you had um, 
something that is a thousand milliliters, a thousand milliliters is a liter, one liter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. Okay, so actually this picture here, according to this picture, it says one liter. How many cubic centimeters is that? Well, one liter is a thousand milliliters, which would be a thousand cubic centimeters. Okay, density is another derived unit. There's many different uh, units for density, kilograms per cubic meters, grams per cubic centimeters, um, and a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. So you can say one gram per cubic centimeter is one gram per milliliter. Um, that's all the same. But density is a derived unit because density is mass over volume that you probably already know. Density is mass over volume. And uh, so, or sometimes written as density equals M over V. Density is equal to M over V. Um, is made up of unit of mass which is grams, maybe kilograms, and volume, which is cubic centimeters or cubic meters, is made up of two different units. It's another derived unit. Okay, so here's a sample question uh, that says, a piece of platinum metal has a density of 21.5 grams per cubic centimeter and has a volume of 4.49 cubic centimeters. What is its mass? Okay, well, of course, this is the equation. D equals M over V. Okay, density equals mass over volume. What are we solving for? The mass. That's M. So I usually like to rearrange it in the equation instead of just automatically plopping it in here. I'm going to rearrange the equation as M is equal to D over V by multiplying both sides by volume. We know the density. We know the volume. The density is 21.5 grams per cubic centimeter. The volume is 4.49 cubic centimeters. So plug in the density, plug in the volume, and we will get uh, 21.5 times 4.49, 96.5 grams. Okay, um, the unit is grams here. Notice the units of density is grams per cubic centimeter. The units of volume is cubic centimeters. They cancel out. Notice one in the denominator, one in the numerator, we cancel out. We will get to more of that next week. It's something called dimensional analysis. I just want to point out that these units of cubic centimeters will cancel out here, and the only unit that does not get canceled out is grams. The mass is measured in grams, 96.5 grams. Okay, next thing. I'll move my face over here. Okay, comparison of three temperature scales. We have three temperature scales here. Kelvin, Celsius, Fahrenheit. Um, we use the United States Fahrenheit, but the rest of the world uses Celsius or Kelvins. Internationally, it's technically Kelvins, but Celsius and Fahrenheit. Um, when people come to the United States, there are lots of them are confused because we use Fahrenheit and the rest of the world uses Celsius. Or you can say, when Americans leave the United States and we see temperatures in Celsius, half of us are confused. But the rest of the world isn't, because the international units um, are Celsius Kelvins. Okay, well, um, let's get to, say, uh, boiling temperature water. Water boils 212 Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. Freezing temperature water, 32 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius. Um, in Kelvins, 100 degrees Celsius, 373 Kelvins. 0 degrees Celsius, 273 Kelvins. The relationship between Celsius and Kelvins, I think it's the first one we're getting to, yes. Kelvin temperature is Celsius plus 273.15. Okay, 273 is good enough. It's just if you want more digits, there they are, okay? But 273 for us is probably going to be good enough. Uh, one of our soon lectures will be about something called significant figures, what to do about these like digits like 0.15. But don't worry about it for now. So 100 plus 273, 373. 100 plus 0 is 273. 100 plus 25 is 298. 100, well, I said 100. 273 plus 100 is 373. 273 plus 0 is 273. 273 plus 25, I'm sorry, I messed up. 273 plus 25 is 298. 273 plus 37 is 310. So Take the Celsius temperature at 273.15, and you will get the Kelvin, temp Kelvin temperature. 
Of course, you could just subtract 273 from Kelvin to get Celsius. Subtract 273 from 373, and you get 100. 298 minus 273 is 25. 273 minus 273 is 0. So Celsius to Kelvin is actually really easy. Celsius to Kelvin, just add 273. Okay, so just add 273. It's actually easy. Going from Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius, not as easy, but it's not hard. Here's the equation. Fahrenheit is equal to 9 fifths C plus 32. Whatever a Celsius temperature is, multiply times 9 fifths, add 32. So if we're talking about 0 degrees Celsius, 0 times 9 fifths is 0. Add 32, you get 32 left. If Celsius is 100 degrees, 100 times 9 fifths, I don't know what that is off the top, top of my head. Uh, at 32, and you get uh, 212. But take the Celsius temperature times 9 fifths plus 32, and you will get the Fahrenheit temperature. So that's how we convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit, or Celsius and Kelvins. Of course, you can go from Kelvins to Celsius, or Fahrenheit to Celsius, either way. Okay. Why are we doing all this units? Because in 1999, a $125 million Mars orbiter entered Mars atmosphere 100 kilometers lower than planned and was destroyed by the heat. And this is $1999, that's a lot more today. And the reason why, one of the scientists in, I, I don't know where, but one scientist did it in one unit pounds, another scientist did it in newtons. Those are not the same thing, okay? What is it reality? One pound is 4.45 newtons. But one person did in pounds. It's like, imagine you did in pounds, someone did in kilograms. And you designed that part of the space shuttle wrong or the uh, Mars Climate Orbiter wrong. Because of that, the director of NASA said, this is going to be a cautionary tale that will be embedded into the introduction of the metric system in elementary school, high school, and college science courses till the end of time. So we need to be able to convert between all these different units. Okay, so that's it for at least this first part of the notes today.